Hello and welcome back to another Inkscape for Sewing Beginner Tutorial. This tutorial is going to get you started on making a lot of different pattern alterations and we're going to do that using just these three basic tools. So let's get started and jump right in. Our first tool that we're going to be looking at is just the arrow up here. It is the selector tool, which is going to allow you to select and transform objects. The next tool we will be talking about is the node tool, which will edit the paths, on your pattern lines or your object. Finally, we're going to use the pen tool, which will allow you to draw your curves and your lines. Let's go ahead and take a look at the selector tool. You notice when you select on these tools, the context toolbar does change. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a shape on the board for us so we have something to work with. I'm going to choose the selector tool and I already have it selected so these arrows will appear. These arrows allow you to resize or transform your shape. Choosing which arrow is how you're going to transform it. Now notice I can change the aspect ratio of this shape unless I use a modifier key, control, while I'm also dragging. Then it will maintain the aspect ratio while I am resizing. If you select the shape again or double click on it, you're going to see the arrows change. These arrows will allow you to rotate or transform by skewing the sides. So first, I'm just going to click on a corner and it's going to allow me to rotate. If you use the modifier key control, it will rotate in about 15 degree increments. The side buttons are going to skew your image, pulling the sides. The next one you notice is this transform origin or the center point button. And that's where it is currently rotating around is that center. But you can change the point that it rotates around. It could be on the shape or it can even be outside the shape. And then it rotates around that point. If at any time you make changes that you don't want, remember to use the function control Z for undo or go to edit, undo. When you have an object selected, you'll see some things on the top context toolbar. Over here, we have our rotate and our flip buttons, which are commonly used for sewing patterns. This one will rotate counterclockwise and it is still rotating around that point that I had. So just keep that in mind, it will rotate from wherever this point is. So I could rotate clockwise. I can also mirror, let's get another shape so I can see, you can see how it's going to mirror. Let's go ahead and skew this one a little bit so you can see the difference here. It's gonna go ahead and I'm going to flip it horizontally and flip it vertically. You can also come over to the fill and stroke panel studio here to change the color. So right now I'm on the stroke paint color, so I can go ahead and change the paint color of the stroke to whatever color I would like. You can also go to black if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and keep on blue for us. You can also come and fill your shape with a flat color if you like. You can choose the colors down at the bottom as well if you like those. To remove a fill, you can just push the X here, or you can come down where it says fill down here and right click remove fill. The stroke style is one I use quite often with patterns. This is to change the width of a stroke. I usually keep it between three and six for projecting, but while you're working on a pattern, if you want to make it smaller so you can get really accurate if you want, keep it smaller, but don't forget to change your stroke to larger for projecting. 
The stroke that you want is the solid stroke. If a pattern has dashed lines, you can come here and select those pattern lines and click on the solid line. You can also click on an entire layer here and come over to the fill in stroke and we can change the entire thing that is selected so that they are the same color. See how I have them all selected now? So they're all coming to be the same color. So I selected them all in the layers panel. So along with the selector, the arrow tool, you can use your layers panel to select those. Let's go ahead and talk about the node and the pen tool. I'm actually gonna jump down to the pen tool first because I wanna draw a shape for us. To use the pen tool, you just start clicking to add points for your lines. If I just click once, it's going to be just drawing a straight line with regular nodes. If you click and hold, you're going to see these lines coming off your node, and that's making it into a curve. And depending on how you angle that curve and how long you make that line, changes the curve. When you are satisfied with the curve that you want for that line, you just let go, and it's going to hold it, and it's going to start curving this next line so you can finish off the curve here. So I drag and hold or I click. When you're ready to end your shape, you can come back to where you started or you can just double click and it will end that shape. When you come back to edit it, you can use the node tool. Click on the node tool and you'll see all the nodes appear. You can click on a node and you can drag it wherever you want. You can also select a node and we can change the type of node that it is. This is a, a node's corner, which this one already is. You can change it to a smooth node, which it, it kind of it turns it into a curve. You can change it into those symmetric nodes that have the drag arrows on it. Okay, and you can also change it to an auto curve, so it will auto smooth it out. And sometimes the auto smooth looks better than the curved one, so kind of play with it a little bit. You can also change several nodes at once by just dragging and selecting all of them and changing them. If I want these all to be smooth, I can change them all to smooth by selecting all of them. Okay, again, we can select all of them. You can also change the location of all the nodes that you selected by coming up to the top context toolbar here. And I can add an inch. Since I'm working in inches, I can subtract an inch. And it's going to move all those selected nodes. You can also just select one node and move that one however you would like. Okay, whether you're dragging and selecting or just selecting one node at a time. So those are the basic tools, our selector tool, our node tool, and our pen tool. With these three tools, you can do a lot of different pattern alterations. So let's jump into the next section so I can show you how you use these three tools to make simple pattern alterations on your digital sewing patterns. Okay, I've gone ahead and opened up a demonstration pattern. Now, the first things I want to do is go ahead and change this document to inches because that's what I am going to be working in. And right now it has all the layers. This is a layered file. I can come over to the layers and objects and I can turn off the sizes that I don't want to see. Right now, let's go ahead and let's just work with one size. I want to show you a few things we can do with the selector tool. If I select this, you notice it only selects half of my front bodice piece. That's because these pieces are not actually joined together. They are two separate pieces. So let's go ahead and say you have a pattern that you need to, maybe it's cut unfold and you need to unfold it. But first I notice that these dotted lines, we don't want that. We want straight 
lines, no dots. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. I might go ahead and change the thickness of the lines at this time, or you can do that later. It's really up to you, but I do recommend making them thicker before you project your pattern. Let me just tuck that in here because it's not on there. I'm going to go with three. Now I have this selected. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this piece and you can right click, sorry, on, well here, let's go here, let's select it again. There, it was not letting me right click. So just click off of it and then click back on if it's not showing up. You can duplicate or you can use the shortcut control plus D to duplicate. And what this is going to allow me to do, now I can go ahead and I'm going to flip it horizontally and we have two pieces on top of each other. I'm just going to click the other piece and drag it over. And now I have those two pieces here. You can select all of them by dragging and selecting. See how it selects both of them? And we can group those together. I usually use the shortcuts but you can come over to object, object and group or use the shortcut control G and it makes it one whole piece. So now when you select it, click off of it, I'm gonna select it again. It's all one piece together that you can group. If something is all grouped together that you don't like with your selector, you can come back to the object and you can ungroup if you would like. Okay, now I have two pieces. Again, if you want to just duplicate it so you have a cut, you mirrored cut a left, cut a left, and a cut a right, click it, control D, duplicate. I have it here and I can go ahead and flip it. Okay, those are some simple ways to use your selector tool and some of the options to duplicate it and flip it. But let's go ahead now and look back at our pattern and I'm just going to look at some different sizes so that we can do this quickly here. On this pattern, let's say we want to do some grading and I'm just going to make up a, a grading pathway for us here. I'm not going to get too technical in my demonstration, but I want to show you how you can use the node tool to go ahead and grade between these. So I'm going to go ahead and select one size. I can see that size 8 is selected. So I am working on size 8. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate control D is the shortcut. And I want to go ahead and change the stroke of this one. I'm going to make it a straight line. I'm going to go ahead and make it thicker. And we have that there. So now you can see I'm working with that. Let's go ahead and change that paint color here as well. Stroke paint will come down to maybe like a pink. Now we're going to come down to our node tool and I click on that and the pattern you can see where all of the nodes are. Now you can move those as you need. You can zoom in. I'm using control and the mouse wheel to zoom in but you can also go to view and zoom if you would like. And now I can drag that wherever I need. I duplicated this size eight, which is this blue dotted line. So I still see where that's at. And now I can drag those nodes wherever I need, if I'm grading or whatever I am doing for this point. And you can, you can also drag the lines in between the nodes. You can also select several nodes at once and drag them. Okay, so just getting an idea that you, you can move those pattern lines however you need. Okay, now let's say I, I have that graded now how I need it, but I want to add some length. You can add nodes, so this line is actually my length and shorten line, so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to add some nodes here right at that length and shorten line. Now I know if I click on that length and shorten line, it's going to actually select that length and shorten line. So I'm actually doing it just below it is where I'm adding those nodes. And I've added some nodes in. Let's come up and let's change our units here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the nodes 
at the length and shorten line and below. This is where you can come use your X and your Y axis to add or subtract height. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and add an inch of height. I'm just going to pretend I'm adding an inch of height. So I have the Y axis selected. I'm going to put my plus and I'm going to add one inch. And you can see it's gone ahead and lengthened it one inch. You can also do the opposite. If you, you see, how I still have only the bottom selected. In this shape, they're all blue. That's what's selected. You can also subtract one. And it brought me right back to where we, where we are, were. And you can adjust anything by using the nodes on where you want it to be adjusted and where you need to grade or move those patterns align, whether you're pattern hacking or grading or making any other pattern alterations. Now, if you come across a pattern that you maybe need to trace, Let's go ahead and let's select this other side here. And we're going to use our pen tool now. If it did not have layers or you just needed, you just thought it would be better to trace because maybe there's too many nodes or it's not vector friendly, you can come ahead and you can start drawing lines to trace the pattern as needed. Now, don't worry right now that I have lots of like sharp angles. Let me end that here for you. And you can't see it very well, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to make it big <laughs> so you can see where, where we're at so far. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and continue that line wherever I need to trace it. Okay. Remember to end it, you either close it or you double click. And I've all added it to the one shape. It's looking really weird right now, and that's absolutely okay because we're going to come back to our node tool and those nodes appear and I can readjust those curves where it needs to be on our lines. And it's really simple to move that in where you need it. You can zoom in and get as accurate as you need. I control and my zoom well, and I've moved in. So now I should be getting an idea how these three tools really can get you really far in pattern alterations for sewing with your projector, just using our selector tool, our node tool, and the pen tool. Go ahead, don't be afraid to play around and experiment with it. Let me know how it goes below. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful on your projector sewing journey. Make sure to give me a like and a subscribe. Thank you for joining me.